Hello friends, welcome back to the 8th chapter of this Android series and like today we will be talking about something on OAuth2 implementation. So uh, what exactly is OAuth2? Let us understand this. So to understand this, let me just draw a box over here and say you that assume it to be your Gmail account, right? And in the similar way, I will say that you have something called as Google Drive and you have a Google Drive account. And in the similar way, there is a possibility that you have an account on uh, G Suite. So you must have buy it. So you can just say G Suite. So these are few accounts which you may have and like you are like tied tied up with Google for all these things and like Google is the service provider for all of these products. So like these three products Google has a lot of products like a bunch of products and like they allow to access those products using APIs. So let us talk about it in a while at first let us understand how exactly do you sign in as of now. So what exactly you do is as of now you go to gmail.com or google drive.com or gsuit.com and enter up your username and password. Right this is what you people are doing and after that like there might be another check like the a two two way check like you may receive a text message with an OTP. Uh, so this might be the another check which might be applied for you which like make sure that yes the right person is like logging in and as you log in like as soon as you log in you are like you should be able to like access all of these three accounts from your browser because the browser knows that yes this particular account is logged in and related to this account you can access the gmail related to this account you can access the google drive and related to this account you can access the gsu so this is how like you people work into it. This is nothing but a normal authentication using username and password. So now what is the need of OAuth2 authentication? So at first you should understand this thing that this authentication which is being done as of now is done by an individual like you and me and this is our account. This is not done by any application. So this is how like we like do up the access. But let's, let's assume like rather than an individual, there is an Android application like AutoFunnel which we are creating uh, and this application wants to like see up your Google mail. So that, that is Gmail. So this is what like AutoFunnel this application is doing in which like it is reading up your Gmail and like taking in all the emails from Just Dang and India Mart and automating the text message message. So in the same way like this particular application now needs to talk to your Gmail account. So what what all things like you can do. So what you can do is like you can give this Android application your username and your password right. You can give this Android application your username and password and this way like you can access the Gmail account but like the problem with this approach is like the Gmail server which sits over here. This server does not know from where this like request is coming because HTTP is a stateless protocol. It does not carry up the state from where it is coming. So this Gmail account like server it does not know from where it is coming so it cannot identify with like whether this request is coming from an individual or this request is coming from an Android application. So what they have done like to solve this problem entirely what they have done is they have made use of something which is called as O auth 2 authentication. So what is this authentication we will just talk about it diagrammatically in, in, in some while let us go ahead and see up this particular representation live. This is an Android app and you can see over here in this Android app we have various pages. So if I just swipe right. So this is this is this is the registration page for a business which is given by AutoFunnel. 
here you type in your company name phone number then how many years you are in the business then your like uh, website here you are typing typing up your pricing information then payment terms then refund policy and like maybe some kind of policy again over here and here on page 3 you can say that you can see that auto funnel has given two options one is for imap registration and second is for google sign in so this button is nothing but like for o or two authentication so this application this is the application this is not an individual who will be trying to access your gmail this will be the application which will be trying to access your gmail so as i click on the sign in button you will be able to see that like this particular thing has given me an option to choose choose an account to continue to auto funnel so this is my application auto funnel and it says from which gmail account you want to continue with auto funnel right so in this particular mobile phone i have been like connected only to uh, one gmail account you can see over here in gmail i have been connected to host dash tune dash perform and if i go back to auto funnel over here so you see that it states like if you want to use this i will just select this so as i like selected it it gave me a message which, which says that orno auto funnel would like to view your email messages and settings <clears throat> so as what we were talking about over here like this is our gmail account so this particular auto funnel is requesting to access your gmail messages right and like you can allow or disallow so this is something on your phone and like you're allowing this application now so as an you are you will not be accessing your gmail as an individual while this application auto funnel will be using up your gmail account so you can just say allow or disallow so if i deny you you are not giving the access to this particular auto funnel application if i allow you are giving the access to this particular auto funnel application but at the end if you allow then it is google who will be tracking like whatever this auto funnel is doing it can track everything and like when you allow it it just like can access your gmail without your like intervention it is not like necessary that you tell him like it, it can use it anytime it want but obviously like gmail can keep track of it and like this is how it is recommended by gmail so you allow it and then you log in and then you can like uh, see all the things in this particular area of auto funnel application so if i just go ahead and like now we will talk about this diagram so now this is an android application and this all things like the access of all of these your accounts will be done by the android application so you have already seen like how exactly the oauth tool looks like and now let us discuss like how exactly we do it in android so in android we have something called as google play services so this will be your phone and in your phone you will have an android application which will be running uh, like within your phone and then with this in this phone like you will have something called as play services right so google play services so if, if we just talk about these play services these play services are nothing but the apis which make sure that things go right so what will happen is like there will be a server over here which we call as google console which we can manage by google console so there will be a google server which will be managed by this will be actually managed by google console so what exactly will happen your application is running on this device right this application is running on this device so what the application will do is like this particular application will ask play store please like uh, i have i want to connect to the devices play store please connect me to the, the gmail like account of this particular user so what will play store do play store will go to the google server and like check if we have an entry of this application so we should have an entry of this android application on google console uh, this will be the first step after like having the entry we will be like importing up the required libraries and these libraries will talk to play services so this play services will like 
send in a request to this server and like ask if you have an entry of this application and it will say yes i have the fingerprint of this application and this application has been registered with us this can allow so this this can allow like the over two so as it gets gets this particular like uh authentication what it will do is like it will then go to the user so user is using your application yeah right this auto funnel application is used by the user so this particular person will go to the user and like ask user oh this is an application which is auto funnel which is registered with google console can he access your gmail account please say yes or no so this was what you were seeing on the screen just before few minutes the user say with yes or no and if it says yes then this particular device will be able to access this gmail account in a similar way it can access the google drive it can access the g suite but whatever it will access it will ask the user if it allows the application to access that or not and how exactly does google track everything it like tracks everything via the google console this google console has an entry which have the package name and the fingerprint of this application so finger every application have a different like sha1 fingerprint and like every application like uh, can be registered with google console so while you are making up this application this is the fingerprint of this application and this fingerprint is mentioned in the google control and like when this runs on the play services this fingerprint is sent from play services to this google console it matches both the fingerprints and it knows oh this particular like android application is auto funnel and like this is registered for over to let's ask the user if like he trust this particular app application or not so this was like the major like uh, the thing which is done in over to authentication now we will see like how to implement it so before i just go ahead and see how to implement it so this is a page which like defines like various type of platforms which can be used to authenticate over to and like use these services in google but today in this tutorial like we will be like particularly uh, focusing on android like uh, calling everything from android and like how to do everything in android so the process is different for web it is different for android it is different for ios it is different for like any other application which you are doing maybe a desktop application a windows desktop application linux desktop application so the, there is a little bit gap between the process in all of them but yes the actual need and the use of over to authentication like remains the same and like can be defined using this way so now let us see the steps involved in implementing over to in android so at first like you can like create up an account on console.developers.google.com and like go up to this particular page which is this you can go on chrome and like do everything after you have created up the account and you go on this page you will require two things one is the package name and second is the fingerprint so how you are getting to get them so if you just see up over here at this place so you can get the package name from very top which is this so let me just copy it and let me just paste it over here and say that the package name which we have got is this let me just paste it out here so the package name is this and let us see the sha1 fingerprint so how to get that let me show it to you so in this particular android studio at the very right side you will find something called as gradle you can see at the top there is something called as gradle this is gradle and you just need to click on this gradle so go to auto funnel task android and inside this android we have something called as signing report just double click on this signing report and at this bottom place you will be finding like something is getting triggered two processes are running and in some time you will have all the report let me just zoom in so it says that gradle demon started and like this is done so i will just 
scroll up. So here you can see, right, in the run window, you can see that there is something called as SHA1. So this is nothing but your fingerprint of SHA1. Just copy this fingerprint and like, let me just paste it over here. So these two are the fingerprints and the package name. Now what you have to do is you have to go to this particular page, which is nothing but this. You can see on very top, which is console.developers.google.com. You pay credentials and hit an enter. So as you will hit an enter, you will reach up to this particular page, which is credentials. You can see from the left side. And here you will have to say create credentials. So you see that I have already created a few credentials, but I have not created a credentials for this particular type. And like this application, which we are doing in our like uh, tutorials. So what you need to do, you need to go to what to client. So there is something called as API key service account and a lot of things. But for Android, you have to just go to OAuth to client. And in this client, when you reach up over here, it will ask which kind of application it is. So you are building up this over to client for Android, right? Let me name as this, this as tutorial uh, credentials and the package name was com.example.autofunnel. So let me copy it and just paste it over here. And this asks for SHA1 certificate fingerprint. What is this fingerprint? This is this fingerprint. Let me copy this fingerprint and like paste it out here. And let me check if I have fetched this fingerprint from the right place. So this has been taken from the right place. Okay. So now let me go ahead and like save this over client ID and let me say create. So I have created up this ID and you can see that this ID is created up over here and this has been saved. So now let us move ahead in this tutorial and get like going with the next part we have created up the first part which is nothing but like this part this is all set this was all which was required in this part now we have to go inside the application and like we have to like see all these things the first thing is like we need google sign in button then we need to import required libraries and at last we need to write up the code for authentication. So at first what we will do is like we will first do this, this thing which is importing required libraries. So what libraries we require over here is, let me just show you of them. So let me just edit it. And these are the libraries which are required. Let me go over here and go to gradle build module level we minimize this minimize this and these are the dependencies at the very last i will just paste all of them so these are like few few authentications which have to be done like we have imported up all these things so you can see that there are the google play services authentication then Google Play Services Identity, Google API Client for Android, and then Google Services for Gmail. Because for AutoFunnel applications, we were like using of the Gmail. Hence, like we were like planning to use of the authentic and like the API is created by like Gmail itself. The main point which you can like see over here is the versioning. So these set of APIs and jar files should always be maintained with a proper versioning. So these set of versions work for me and like they should work for you even. But you, if you go ahead and like change up this authentication to 16, so this will not work with this version of client Android. This have to be checked and like will have to, you will have to like see what exactly combine, combine, combines with that version. So, but in this case, this works and like you can take a screenshot now for this as we are going to move ahead. So after like we have them over here, you people know that we need to tell Android Studio that like we have included few libraries, please include them. So I'll just go to file and say invalidate cache and restart. I think that the build is successful. Now let us go ahead and like put up this particular thing that is over to authentication. 
So the next point which we have to see today is like this sign in button. So when the person clicks on this sign in button, he uh, like moves on with the authentication further. So here in this case, we will be placing up this in like this fragmented activity. So this is the activity which has this button. So I'm just like replacing of this button instead of this button, like we will have the Google sign in button. So for Google sign in button, we have a like a specific format. So if I just go ahead and like say something like this and the ID will remain same that is sign in button. And let me just say layout Android layout and center true. So this will make sure that this is in the center of this particular parent. And let me delete of this button. So this button is being used up in fragmented activity. So in this like we applied up a listener which is here. So we do not require this button and like this particular uh, like on click listener is also not required. So let me like delete it and let me delete this as well and let me go about all the other things look fine let me delete this and even the like the fragmented code let me delete this so in this activity like we have a button and as we will click on that button users should be able to like google sign in right this is what we are doing as of now let me like delete all these things which makes things cumbersome and looks this activity looks weirder. Let me delete all the work managers and we do not want any work managers. So this is good. So we have this fragmented activity and in this fragmented activity like we have on grid method. So this is very simple. This is the simple code, right? So in this place we will be like now putting up the code. We have the button over here. We have this button over here in this relative layout and now we will access everything over here and so let us move ahead to the third part of this like inside application work which is like writing up the code for authentication which is this. So for writing up the code at first like we will be declaring up the variables. So let us not import of these statements. These statements will be imported up by themselves. Let me go down and show you a few variables which are required. So you can see up from line number 10 till 14. These are the three variables which are required. This is nothing but the unique number. This can be anything not necessarily one. We will talk about it. First thing is Google sign in client. So I will just say import class and you can see that this class is over here. And again sign in button alt enter import class sign in button is here. So now we have these particular things which are outside the create method and like inside create method we will be requiring up till this at first. Let me copy it and let us study this. So inside create after we create the content view I am pasting up this code. The second library is Google sign in options. First library was Google sign in client then we have another library which is Google sign in options and then we have another library which is scopes. So we have to take it from com.google.android.gms common API otherwise it will not work. And again like I will be importing up this scopes and you can see that like all of these import statements are here. So what actually is happening we are creating up a Google sign in client and like you are just giving it a name for this object similarly this is a button. So whenever there will be a click on this button, right? Whenever there will be a click on this button, then there should be the authentication check made. And how it is made? It is made using this client object. This client is object, which is M Google sign in client object. It is required to make sure that what kind of access is required. So if you see over here in this particular case, Google sign in options. If you see this, particular thing Google signing option which is we have taken the name as GSO we say that new Google signing option dot builder Google signing option dot default signing you can like 
change it to some other sign say uh, in game sign in or like there are can be other things as well and then you are requesting in scope so what actually is scopes if i go over here and say dot so you say that you can access the drives google drives you can access the cloud state then you can like if i just scroll down you can access the fitness and then like there are a lot of things lot of apis which can be accessed then you can access email then you can access games so profile then you can access like basic information using profile so there are a few things but in this particular case for out of funnel we were like requiring of the email that's why like we requested of the scope for the email so after requesting of the scope for the email we just requested of email dot request email so this was the scope and then after defining of the scope we are requesting the email then we are just saying build so all of these options and things here in android we are doing using google sign in options but if you are applying up over for web then you will be doing all of these things in console you will be defining up the scopes everything like we created up the oath client in console only for android but if you are requiring the access from web then you will have to do a lot of other things from the console but here in, in in case of android you do not require this you just need this options and you need to pass these options in like uh, this particular sign in client so this sign in client like gets its objects from uh, google sign in which is here and this is nothing but like get activity so let me just uh say this dot get application context and again get activity is not working because this code might have been like taken inside a fragment before but i am pasting up this code inside the activity directly so that's why this works over here and here i say this dot find view by id and i'm finding the id of the sign in button and like i have assigned up the signed in button right so as of now like we have defined up the objects put up the information and like we have taken control of the sign in button now we have to apply up the listener for sign in button which is listen and like will perform various tasks so let me just copy it up and like we will talk about this code so now this is the listening the listening code we need we need this class view so i'm just having this class and i do not need this log let me delete this log and let me delete this as well this is also not required all what is required is this intent so this is a signing button and we have click uh, setting up a on click list listener whenever a person clicks on this button at first it will like log which says that i am on set on click listener and this on click listener is for google sign in button so we have like put up a log that we are inside listener and inside this listener you have to like pass on an intent so what is an intent so i have already told you intent in something which is like a class which is defined to communicate with other applications or within the application so here as the like sign in button is pressed there is like a requirement of your application to talk to play services and after talking to play services it should talk to the google server and check if there is the uh, client id on the console so this particular object which you have created up has a function which is get sign in intent and this like just pass on the intent to this intent and when you like start activity for results and when you uh, like say that please start this intent this intent will go and talk to the play services so how does it know that this has to talk to the play services because this intent has been like created up by m google sign in client so m google sign in client that is this object will make sure that this particular intent talks to the play services so now we have the intent and you just need to start the activity for results and pass in the intent and just a unique variable it can be 1 2 3 4 anything so this is how using this particular integer we have we can verify like from where this 
from where the like the results are coming out what do we mean by that now if you remember like there was an option with the front user where he could have clicked yes or no by giving up the permissions so for instance the user clicked yes then the application should know that the user has clicked yes and in the similar way if the user clicks no the application should know that the user has clicked in no so this particular line takes you till the point the user can select yes or no but what happens after when the user selects yes or no that is something which is handled in a like method which is given for which is like common for the activity and this is the method which is on create results right so this particular method like whenever the person says yes or no this particular request code will be filled up by this integer which is r sign in so you can check if this request code is equal to r sign in that is again one you can take it two three four five if two goes two will come three goes three will come so here you can check if this you need to make sure that this particular thing is unique for your app right so you can check if this request is coming from r sign it it means that this request is coming from the play services intent and then there is another class which is task and google sign in account you will have to take all of these into account import all of them so as i am importing them all of them comes above over here and these all like classes and like all the like jar files come up from these implementation so now we have this implementation let us like go to second activity if the person is able to log in he will just go to second activity and here let me just say get application context <laughs> and here let us just show up the logs which are nothing but this so we are showing up the logs saying that yes the google user signed in successful so when did it sign in successful when the account is not null so here let's come back to line 69 we were talking about this code if it finds it equal then you have to say google sign in dot get signed in account from intent and then data data is here and you will get something called as completed task in completed task just say completed task okay so the line number 71 and 72 remains same if there is some value in the account it means that the user has logged in successfully if there is no value it is null it means that the user was not able to log in successfully this is what is placed in life from line 74 to 81 which checks if the user account is not null it means that it has logged in successfully so please move ahead with the application this is what it says so on activity results handles up all of these things and like you can see and like if you have worked on web before you can see that how easy it is to implement over to authentication and uh, android and i think like this is it for like setting up the uh, particular thing on android but there might be a scenario that you might need to check in some other activity if like this particular account is signed in or not so how will you check that so if you just see up this line and let us compare up with line number 72 so let us now compare line number 72 and 73 so line number 73 says google sign in dot get last signed in but if you see like line number 70 uh, like 1 and 2 it was google sign in dot get signed in account from intent it was getting from intent and it was getting the last sign in account so if there was some last sign in account it will come into account and again the, the account will not be null and hence like this way you will be able to check in some other activity if you are already logged in but here you are logging in for the first time that's why you are getting signed in account from an intent but you can sign in from the last signed in account so i hope like this should be very clear to you and this like completes up our coding part as well for OAuth authentication now let me go ahead and like save it and let me go to my emulator let me just go to gmail and let me skip this let me just enter into an email id which is hosttune36.com
okay so this account has already been added and let me just go ahead and run this application on this device so to run this application i have to again move back to app so if you remember like we clicked on gradle and like you fetched the sha token so this change this to auto funnel signing report i need to convert back to app and i have to select auto funnel the simulator and then i have to press up this particular button so now it you see at the very bottom it says greater build running and then it will be installing in a second so it gives an error which says that duplicate class com dot google dot com dot util listenable future found in module okay so that's not an issue these type of errors come and unlike go so you can see that this particular oauth application like might be having a listenable future class and here in this particular dependency like we rather than excluding it we included it so that's why it says like and duplicate entry found previously we were not having these oauth to authentication libraries and hence like guava was not getting included two times so there might be a scenario like this particular thing is using a jar file which is guava and this particular thing is also using a jar file which is guava so at both the places it is included that's why like i am excluding it over here let me just save it go to file invalidate cache and restart so this is to make sure that android restarts and like makes sure that the changes have been made so I see that the Android Studio is now built successfully. So let us go ahead and execute the application in the emulator. It is installing, launching it up. It is up and there. Let me also open up the logs. Let me just move it ahead and this is good. And let me delete all of them. Let me come back over here. Let me scroll ahead and move on to the next activity. When this activity, you can see that this button has been changed to Google sign in button, which is so cute. And I will go back and click on this button. As I click on this button, it asks me which account you have to open. And here now we have host tune 36. Let me just click on this. As I click on this, it like takes me to the next activity which is auto funnel and like it did not ask me for the permissions why like actually it did not ask me for the permissions because i have already given the permissions on this account and how can i check that i can go over here and like just open up this page which is my account.google.com dash permissions so you can see that i am logged in with hosttune 36 and it says me that like auto funnel has like these particular account access so for any like email id you have to give the access one like while testing up i gave up that access but in actual when you will do it for the first time you will get that screen which we discussed about where you have to say yes or no so you can see that it says that auto funnel application has access to what you can view your email address then it can like do all of these things so now you see that this particular access has been made and like this particular sign in is successful. This brings up this lesson to the end. If you have any queries while implementing it, please do not hesitate typing your questions in the comment out there. I will be happy to help you and hope you will subscribe to the channel and please, please, please do tell your friends like we have been building up these courses with our heart and we are trying to make sure that you learn the best of the technologies thank you guys have a great day